Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my videos. And if you are a recurring viewer or a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. I really appreciate you all being here today. Uh, so I have a book haul that I want to do today. I have a stack of just a couple of books that uh, I, I have recently added to my library. And so I thought I would show those off. Um, before I do, however, I do want to firstly mention the change in uh, filming angle. Uh, so I moved around some of my bookshelves as well as my desk. So I'm, I'm filming on a different wall, but I'm still able to have my built-ins behind me, but it's at a slightly different angle. And I think I will do a video showing my new bookshelf arrangement too at some point in the future. Uh, this is still my main bookcase, but I've introduced two new bookcases on the other side of my room. Um, holding my classics while behind me is mainly nonfiction and uh, Russian literature a little bit on some of these shelves uh, but I have the rest of my penguin classics and that kind of thing on these uh, two new shelves that are behind the camera right now so I may do a video uh, showing those as well I just wanted to mention in case anyone was wondering why the angle is a little bit different uh, and the lighting's also a little bit better which I'm, I'm glad about instead of having the window directly behind me um, it's sort of more at an angle, so it's not quite blowing out the camera like it was before uh, when it's sunny like it is today. Uh, so, for jumping right into the book haul, the first is a book that I decided to pick up because of my reading of Moby Dick um, and some of the other um, sort of whale-based books that I have been reading. I wanted to better understand uh, what the what the industry of whaling was like at its peak in the uh, mid to late 18th or mid to late 19th century in the US. And so I picked up Leviathan by Eric J. Dolan, The History of Whaling in America. Um, all these came from thrift books. Um, I'm really sort of intrigued um, to learn more about the, the history of whaling and not so much the process of whaling itself because I find that incredibly brutal and horrific and I, I don't enjoy reading those passages but wanting to understand more about the lives of the crew of the whaling ships the the men themselves who would go out on these whaling ships for five years at a stretch sometimes even longer um, and I'm really curious to learn more about how they coped with such incredible sort of societal isolation being away from the world entirely, away from land entirely for half of a decade, if not longer, um, seems absolutely uh, mind boggling to me. Why, first of all, why anyone would ever agree to do that? And then sort of what it must be like, uh, what it must have been like for them to experience such extreme, you know, extremely long durations of being away from, from modern society. So that's my main reason for picking this up. Not so much the actual horrific killing and, and flensing of whales. Um, I, I don't enjoy those portions. Um, however, you do, need to un you, do, you do need to know about that process in order to know th what the life was like for the men on board. But I certainly am not reading it for those portions, but more for the, the human interest side of things. So I'm, I'm very excited for this one, um, and I'm hoping to get to this one fairly soon. It's sort of bumped up on my priority list, just given the topic. And um, since I read Moby Dick earlier this month, I want to read this while that novel is still fresh on my mind. Uh, then moving on, and I should point out most all, most all of these are nautical and or maritime related. That's sort of where I've landed in my, my reading as of right now. Um, so the next one is by Nathaniel Philbrick, uh, who is the author of In the Heart of the Sea, which is a book about the sinking of the whale ship Essex, which inspired uh, the Pequod in Herman Melville's Moby Dick. And I read that book and I made a video review of that a couple months ago, really enjoyed it. And so this is his book, um, Sea of Glory, America's Voyage of Discovery, the U.S. Exploratory Expedition, 1838 to 1842. And this is a, a period of U.S. history 
and a, an area of U.S. history that I am sorely lacking uh, in my my own knowledge base of. So I'm very excited to be able to read it, to read it from uh, Nathaniel Philbrick. I love his writing style. I find him to be very knowledge knowledgeable about his topics, but never. Um, sort of talking down to you as a reader. So he definitely knows his stuff. He 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 has a tight grip on his subject matter, but he doesn't let he doesn't lord that over you. I guess is this is the best way to say it. Um, it's very accessible. And then also the way that he writes, it's not narrative nonfiction, but I feel that it's it's bordering right on the line of narrative nonfiction. So it really pulls you into the story. He relies very heavily on. Um, source materials such as uh, law, um, sh uh, shipping logs, journals, diaries, letters, that sort of thing that really add that that extra dimension of hearing hearing stories, hearing perspectives, hearing thoughts from the individuals discussed in, in his book themselves and not just from his point of view. So there's a lot of source material, at least in his his book in the heart of the sea about the sinking of the Essex whale ship. We get a lot of that firsthand account because of the because of Owen Chase's um, sort of logging of the expedition and logging of the of the tragedy that happened. He had a lot of material to work with, um, so I have a feeling that this book is going to be similar. At least I'm very hopeful that it's going to be similar in as much as it will have a lot of that sort of that rawness of the first perspective of source material. Um, documentation being utilized. So I'm very hopeful. And again, this is one that I really want to get to soon. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to it in April. So I, I may be pushing this on to uh, into May. Uh, but if I'm able to get it read in April, I certainly hope to. Uh, then the next one is by Caroline Alexander. And that is The Bounty, the true story of the mutiny on the bounty. Um, this is one that's been on my TBR for quite a while. Um, I, I know very little about the mutiny on the bounty beyond the fact that there was a ship called the bounty in which a mutiny took place. Um, I know a, a very little about um, about this topic, about even just about uh, n naval expeditions and sort of maritime history itself. And that's why I'm really trying to push these these next couple of months to educate myself on the topic, just because I find it incredibly interesting. Um, even just sort of the ecosystems and the cultures and societies that formed aboard crews on ships, um, of course, leading to things like mutinies. Um, but I just find it incredibly fascinating. So I'm, I'm interested to read this. Her book... Um, the Endurance about uh, the expedition of Ernest Shackleton, um, I have read, and it was absolutely incredible. And from that, I really enjoyed her writing style. And when it's added on with sort of a, a, a stranger than fiction story, um, it, it, it really pulls you into the narrative. So I'll be curious to see if that writing style um, is is sort of echoed in, in, her, in her newer book, the bounty. Um, I think it will be just because I think that type of thing typically holds true for an author. So I'm very excited for this one. Uh, then the next one is uh, a fiction, and that is Patrick O'Brien's Master and Commander. And this is one that I don't really understand why I haven't read it yet. It's very similar to my feelings for Moby Dick, of a book that I have known the title of for a very long time. I've even known the story for a very long time, but I've never actually sat down and read the book. Um, and I have an e-copy of this, but I really wanted a physical representation for my shelf. And uh, I'm really getting back into reading paperbacks um, these days. So I thought I would go ahead and pick it up in physical form. So I'm really, I'm really eager to get into this one. And I'm really hopeful that I'm going to like, going to really like it and be able to have, uh, have a new series to dive into. Cause I believe there are several books in, uh, the, uh, Jack, uh, Jack Aubrey series. So I'm very much looking forward to this and it's slim enough that I think, I think I may add this on to my April TBR. Uh, but that's, that's yet to be cemented. But as of right now, sort of tentatively, I'm hoping to get to this one in April. Um, and then lastly, uh, this is one that I have started reading already just because I was very fascinated by the premise and I really wasn't able to hold, hold myself away from it any longer. Um, and that is The Glorious Misadventures, Nikolai uh, Rezanov and the Dream of a Russian America by Owen Matthews. This is a book that uh, became known to me when I was scrolling on Goodreads. I was looking at uh, books. Uh, one, I should back up. One of my favorite ways to find new books is is searching a book that I really enjoyed and then seeing what el what other readers have read. And that is how I stumbled upon uh, Glorious Misadventures. And this is about 
a sub about an individual and then about an entire um, segment of American history and Russian history that I knew nothing about, that I was not aware about at all. This uh, sort of this period of a Russian dream for a Russian America, a, a Russian uh, settlement essentially in America um, under Alexander the uh, first. So, so mid 1800s, I was not aware at all that this was even a, a proposition or a possibility. And so when I saw this, I just bought it immediately uh, because it, it piqued my interest. And I'm very, very much at the beginning. I'm 50 pages in. So we're really just getting a bit of a setup, a bit of a, an explanation of why Russia was looking for an expanse at this particular time. They were looking for it, sort of the, the, the culture back in St. Petersburg, sort of some of the, the new cultural norms that were forming in Russia that then, you know, spurned sort of or spurred sort of this, um, this ex, this, the exploratory, uh, a spirit, I guess, as it were. So I'm really enjoying this. This is a current read for me right now. So I'm hoping to read maybe to get to halfway, uh, today and tomorrow and then finish this up next week. So I will mention, uh, I'll mention a little bit more in detail about this, um, tomorrow for my, uh, weekly wrap up. I want to read a little bit more today, just to get a little bit further in so that I have some more material to talk about. I don't have a whole lot to say about it right now. It's just because I'm still at the very beginning. So I'm hoping to make some more progress today and then talk about this one in a little bit more detail tomorrow in my weekend reading wrap up. Uh, so that is it. That is the book haul. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you would like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now and happy reading.